Hey you guys, today we're going to cover a problem that many customers are reporting with the Dynas Powerbox G2s in low temperatures. I'm also going to share a handy tip with you about how to connect multiple battery packs to your bus bars to keep them all perfectly balanced. Since its release earlier this year, the Powerbox G2 has surpassed many of its competitors both on price point and spec level with built-in features such as Wi-Fi, canvas communication, fire suppression and of course a self-heating function and above all that a 95% discharge rate putting it well ahead of even the market leading competitors. It's with that self-heating function however that many customers are starting to see some problems. This problem was first noticed by customers who are grid tied with their Powerbox and more specifically trying to charge them at night time in cold temperatures from the grid. The symptom of that was that the battery would start reducing the amount of power it was allowing in to charge at anything below 8 degrees. So as you know guys, many countries around the world drop below 8 degrees Celsius every night during winter time. And this is a huge problem for the G2 as a product. The longtime friend of the channel, Porig McCarthy from SPV Energy in Kings Court County Cavan has been dealing with the issue directly here in Ireland and we've agreed to sign up as part of a test group that he can monitor to gather data to report directly back to Dynas. So obviously we can't provide data about charging from the grid in low temperatures. We only charge from wind and solar, as you can hear. What we can do though, and what we did, is provide a heavy load test on those batteries in low temperatures. And here's how it went. We are at seven and a half degrees. There's the electric shower on. Now, the restart time on the inverter could be as long as about 180 seconds. There it goes. That's it. Power's gone. With two batteries turned off and using only one for the test, it failed. In ambient temperatures of 7 degrees with an external temperature of 3 degrees, we put a 9.5 kilowatt load onto it, which adds up to 175 amps at 54 volts, when the max continuous discharge is meant to be 200 amps with a peak of 300 and it failed. So next up we tested it using all three Powerbox G2s and here's how it went. Okay, now we're walking back up again. Okay, she's pulling 9.75 kilowatts, but she hasn't died yet. Now that's with the three batteries running in the ambient temperatures. From that second test, we could see that three power boxes combined could handle the 175 amp load. However, each individual power box was already beginning to derate output by as much as 50% in that seven degree ambient temperature. Nothing like the zero degrees that the self heating function kicks in at. So what's the solution? Well, thanks to real world testing like this from many different customers, Dynas registered installers like Porig at SPV Energy have been able to give that data to Dynas themselves directly and as a result they come up with a software upgrade for the batteries. This software upgrade tells the self-heating function inside the battery to activate at 10 degrees Celsius instead of zero, meaning that there's never any loss of performance. However, there is a catch. This software upgrade can only be requested by official Dynas registered installers and it's done on a case by case basis. You'll need to have your battery connected to the internet in order for it to be successful and it will be activated by Dynas themselves. You also might have to restart the battery after the upgrade is installed. So guys, now that the software patch is available, if you're a Powerbox G2 owner, have a look at your data, test your system, and if you think you need that patch, have a chat with an official Dynas installed rep, like Porig, like SPV Energy, there's a good few of them out there. It might just make a huge difference to your system's performance in the cold winter months. So moving on, how to correctly connect multiple battery packs to your bus bar and this matters just as much as having the exact same length of cable between them to ensure that they all stay balanced in both consumption and charging. And how we do that is by making sure that each pair of positive and negative leads from each battery is exactly the same distance away from our positive and negative of our inverter. So in the case of this bus bar, the distance between each fitting is 38 millimeters or 3.8 centimeters. So the closest battery connection is going to be 38 millimeters away and the furthest is going to be 114 millimeters away and we want to combine them in such a way that each battery connection is exactly the same distance. We're going to call this battery number one. Here's its negative lead. So it's 38 millimeters away from the negative of the inverter. We come over here onto the positive bus bar. We're going to take battery number one's positive lead 
and put it the furthest away. So if this is 114 and this is 38, that gives us a combined total of 152. So this connection is exactly 152 in total away from both. Okay, so battery number two is going to go in the central position. With the lead for number three, I'm going to go on the end. Okay, so we've one, two, three on our negative bus bar. Now, this time around, lead number two is going to go into the middle again. However, lead number three this time is closest to our positive for the inverter. So taking lead number two, which is now in the middle position, the distance from that to the positive of the inverter is 76 millimeters, okay? And the distance of its negative to the negative in the inverter is 76 millimeters, or a total of 152. The negative of battery number three is the furthest away from the negative of the inverter, at a total distance of 114 millimeters. However, the positive of battery number three is the closest to the inverter at a distance of 38 millimeters, excuse me, given a total distance of 152. So the combined connection points of each battery is exactly the same distance away from the positives and negative of the inverter itself. In this case, that's 152 millimeters. Whether you have it longer on the positive or shorter on the negative, as long as it all adds up to the exact same distance for each battery, they will all perform equally and balanced. And with that, the system's back up and running again. I have to say a huge thank you to Wes, a good buddy of mine over in the States for teaching me that very important piece of information and giving me the opportunity to pass it on to you guys out there. I hope it works well for you too. So guys, this video has been a bit of a knowledge dump so far. I hope you found it useful, particularly about the Dynas Powerbox G2s. They're hugely popular with over 2,000 of them selling here in Ireland alone. So a lot of people are going to be facing those temperature problems and now you know what to do about it. As for our off-grid system, well, we haven't really had much in the way of good weather to give it a proper test and get some proper results. Hopefully, between now and the next video, we definitely will. Until then, guys, hope you found this interesting. Hope you found it useful. Do take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you in the next one.